Trident Outdoors is proudly sponsored by Hamlin's Marine, Polar Craft Boats, Flambeau Outdoors, Yeti Coolers. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Trident Outdoors. I'm James Collins. And I'm Christian Carlson. And today, we're headed to the North Main Woods on a woodcock hunt. If you haven't hunted woodcock before, it's a pretty exciting adventure. A lot of joking, a lot of teasing, a fair bit of missing, <laughs> and if you're lucky, you'll even get a few birds. Check this out. So I know you haven't done the woodcock hunting over dogs before, or, or any pointer type hunting. So I figure I might as well give you a lowdown on how it's gonna go. The dog's gonna point. We're gonna get close to the dog. Gary's gonna tell the dog to sick him or fetch or whatever he has for a command. The bird's gonna go in the air. I'm gonna shoot. And then after I shoot, you can shoot. I'll hold your gun while you go find the bird and retrieve it. I don't understand why there's laughing and sarcasm over there. I'm not sure. I guess I'm not sure what part of this you're having a hard time comprehending. <laughs> Thanks, Gary, for bringing us oh, out. No it's problem, be no here. problem. So, explain to me a little bit about what's going to happen here. Just going to take the dog out. He's going to put the collars on him, the beeper collars. Yep. So, whenever the dog goes on point, the beeper starts going off. Okay. It's, okay. It's, it simulates a hawk. <clears throat> okay. So, birds usually hunker down when they hear the when they hear, when the, they hear the hawk. Okay. So, hopefully, that's what will happen today. We can get some sitting still. So if, if the dog goes in and stops, the motion caller is going to notice that the dog stopped. Right. It's going to start beeping. Correct. That'll give us a chance usually to get in around the dog. The best thing is go, as soon as it goes off, go immediately to the dog. He wants to go. This is what they live for. His name again is Finn? Finn, Mickey Finn. Mickey Finn. Yeah, but we call him Finn. He was pointing at six weeks old. No kidding. Yeah. That is awesome. That is you know, awesome. you put a wing on a, on a fishing pole. And yep. And a little, you know, you just walk right out of here. We shot right. four times. This is all we have to show. Yeah, for. we got some, we got some woodcock crap. <laughs> <laughs> so you were saying that's like a monster bird. That's like a ten-point bird that went no, down. No, that's a set full seven ounces. A full seven ounces. Well, a booner. Six to seven. Now, and are we talking live weight or are we talking live weight with the kidneys and, yeah. and heart yeah, in it? It's a big okay. bird. Okay, it's a big bird. Seven ounces. So you go six to seven. That was the full seven. That was a nice bird. Gary says this spot's kind of like McDonald's, <clears throat> just kind of like a drive-thru. It's gonna happen, guaranteed. Ooh. Under here. Pretty sure you were making fun of me when we got here because of my great big old shotgun shell. <laughs> <laughs> But it looks like to me you could probably use 12 gauge. I don't think I would have hit him with Let me see them real quick, Gary. I don't think I would have hit him with Oh no, there's gauge. there's something in there. Okay. Yeah, I thought they were blanks. Yeah, <laughs> never know. <laughs> this is where I give my gun to the cameraman and take over. <laughs> Come on. All gone. Come. I know, Dad usually hits him. I know. Usually you're fetching after I shoot. I know. He got him. Face them trees. Yeah, he's ready to There he goes. The fetching machine. I kind of blistered him. Oh, it's 
in a while in the books, but I'm pretty content with three birds. Thanks yeah. a lot. I appreciate it. Sure, like 10%? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I had a few blanks in my gun. Uh, but what we put up though? We, we pointed out what, 12 to 15 birds? At least in and, uh, like five partridge. And, yeah, and four or five partridge yeah. easily. Yeah. And, and probably half of those birds had had a mate with it or a, or, oh, yeah. or a buddy right yeah, next to it. That, pretty much that triples every up. time we put up a wood. That's awesome. Doubles or triples. Yep. Yeah. That was a lot of fun though. Thanks a lot. Yeah, no I really problem. appreciate it, man. No problem. Anytime. All right. Well, that's pretty cool, guys. Within 15 miles of the house, you can go out and have a day like this and put up dinner for the wife and the family. Well, let's head home and cook up a couple of birds. Wow, man, my knee's still killing me from that day. We must have put on five to ten miles. Yeah, it was I think killing so. me. Gary, thank you so much for being our host on that Woodcock adventure. What, what a trip! Oh yeah, your guy is a hoot. His dog works hard. Either one of them would make a great retriever for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, I got together with my friend Dan from over at Hamlin's Marine. And as everybody knows, Hamlin's Marina has been a great help to Trident Outdoors. And we were really excited because Dan had a brand new Polarcraft CenterCon boat that we were going to try with some electric downriggers. This is our first time with the new Canon Digitrol system, so I knew exactly where I wanted to test it out. Moosehead Lake. Now everybody knows Moosehead Lake is Maine's biggest lake, but at the same time, Moosehead is really well known for some monster fish. So we set out early one morning in search of some big salmon and big toad. Check this out. As fall begins to settle in and bring a welcome chill to the air, we are reminded that the open water fishing season is drawing to a close. Today, the Trident Outdoors crew teamed up with Dan from Hamlin's Marina to make the pilgrimage north for the last day of trolling. The road is long but beautiful, and is time well spent reminiscing of fishing trips past. This mystery beast on the end of the line, and then you know you've got all the commentary and banter behind you, and you're and you're watching the water, and you're seeing something surface, and you're hearing words like big mako and stuff like that, and you're like, what? Uh, now what?
they just capped it like the the icing was when you're like you want to touch a shark and i thought you were <laughs> you're messing with me but i mean I, my i was just so swimming with you know i wasn't i was like an out-of-body experience so i just you know touched the touch the nose of a shark you know just and then thinking after why why in the world would i ever even think about doing that but. Today's trip brought us to the foot of Mount Kineo on Moosehead Lake. Mount Kineo is an incredible sight to behold, with 700 foot cliffs rising straight up from the water and is a dramatic setting that has attracted visitors for centuries. The fall colors were at their peak and it was hard to not be astounded by the beauty that was before us. At over 75,000 acres and depths over 250 feet, Moosehead Lake is Maine's largest lake and is the headwaters of the Kennebec River. It is home to trophy-sized lake trout, landlocked salmon, brook trout, and smallmouth bass. Black one goes on the main line. Out of the package and into the salmon's mouth. Guaranteed. These things are awesome. Going pink, playing a little Barbie today. Gonna lay them out. We're gonna run about a two foot leader between our Dodger and our bait today. Um, and I'm custom, custom bending the Dodgers a little bit. Um, we got some old school moose head tips and tactics we're gonna use. Run a Dodger upside down. And then we put a few custom bends in it and we get all kinds of wobble out of it. Contrary to a lot of guys, I do leave a fair tab at the end of my knots. That one there's a little excessive, but I definitely leave between a quarter and a half of an inch. There you go, 24 inches of fish death. Shane's not gonna get caught accidentally twisting that thing only three or four times. That is one serious twisted up knot. 10 wraps in there? Jeepers. Six. No doubt? Oh, okay. I faked you on a couple of them. I don't want you to I faked, my, I faked I, you out on a couple of them. See my, all my techniques. I gotcha, I gotcha. There are even secrets withheld in the boat. Get that bad boy 50, 60 feet back. That's working. All right, we are styling. Christian, check out this new Canon Digitrol system. You drop both of these bad boys into free spool. We're at six feet, which is the perfect distance between our splitters. Stack lines. Lock them. 
finish up adjusting your depth. Boom, 20 feet. You sure aren't gonna throw your shoulder out trying to reel this one back in though. Look at that. It's a beautiful thing, my man. It's a beautiful thing. So those are different things you can set. Th this, this, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, you can see the ball? I was just showing you the roads though, on land. <laughs> That's a fish. Small salmon. Look at that. Look at that. That's the way to start the day. Come into this polar craft, you beauty. Oh, pink works. Woo! Look at those beady smelts. Fish on right here. Fish on right here. Pull it out. Reel, reel in and just stand the rod right up. See what we get next. Hey, fish on. Oh, yeah, awesome. Dan, let your fish. Oh, 
Oh yeah, she's awesome, bud. Your first salmon and your first toad. You see it? Oh, look at them on the surface. Nice. Can you get a little closer? A little closer? Got it. All right. Nice job, guys. Nice job, oh, good work, man. <laughs> Look at that. Lake Some nuts. In the boat, yeah. Oh, man. Great work. So, right now, we are in the shadows of Kineo Mountain off of Rockwood, Maine, on beautiful Moosehead Lake on what might be the best day of what I would call an Indian summer that I've ever been on. Uh, Dan has brought us out today so we could do a little trolling in one of his boats from over at Hamlin Marine. And uh, this is a Polarcraft Outlander series, Dan. Tell me a little bit more about the Outlander series boats. Uh, the Outlander series of boats is a, a series of boats within Polarcraft that we helped develop and design. We had some uh, connections over at uh, LL Bean okay. in Freeport. And we've done some promotions with them before, uh, and we uh, we sketched out some boats on the table, a big mahogany table. We sketched these out of the beam, and uh, with some of their uh, some of the good people over there, like Jeff Miller, uh, who designs uh, fishing tackle yep. and hunting gear. And uh, what we found is we were we had a, a lot of data, a lot of feedback from our customers. That they want something that's going to be uh, durable. It's going to be tough. It's going to have a lot of the features that you need mm -hmm. for, for loading up the boat with gear like we have. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that's one of the major things I've noticed about this boat, Dan. Um, Christian and I and Shane, the cast of Trident Outdoors, we are aggressive when it comes to fishing, hunting, and being out here. This boat in every way just emanates that. I mean, this thing is sweating hardcore. Uh, I'm really impressed with how few frills there are, how little plastic there is, how few uh, pieces of chrome there are on this yeah. boat. Um, it is it is really, I mean, gone, you guys have really gone through and created a boat for the hardcore guy. I get that, you know, I mean, we, we you know, some of us are more hardcore than others. Right. You know? Some of us have to go to work in a tie and suit, and right. we all aspire to be out here and doing this. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, this is, you know, this platform, what we're using it for today is perfect. I yep. mean, we've got four guys out here. We have another room for a couple more guys if we wanted to. Easily. Run some more rods. Uh, you're going to have people, uh, they'll buy this boat and use it for a completely different purpose. They, they might use it for sea duck hunting. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's this boat has that uh, mossy oak uh, print yep. on it. And uh, that's very popular with those guys. But it's a multi-use boat. For somebody who's a sportsman, yep. who's a guide. I mean, if you're going to run a business and be a guide service, can't think of a better boat than this. No, no, absolutely not. Uh, one of the things we've been talking about, guys, with this boat is uh, just how much space there is uh, on deck. First of all, it's an open boat center console. From about six feet forward to the transom and back, this boat is just trolling lake trout and salmon today. And we're not tripping over each other. We're not tripping over each other's gear. We're all acting like we've got ADHD because everybody is constantly glancing at rods and at this incredible scenery today. Excellent boat. I'm really glad you brought us out here. Uh, the other thing I've got to say is how unbelievably well this 115 is pushing this boat around today. Um, Yamaha and you guys must have a pretty tight knit relationship. I see them on a lot of your boats, um, but uh, I'm a little I, died in the wool today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't tell enough. And this, you know, we are a small business, a family business in Maine, and we we live and die by. Uh, our customers expectations and uh, we talked about it earlier uh, when a customer goes out and they get in a sticky situation and they get home on their boat you know and they're brand loyal and uh, Yamaha has been an excellent line for us mm -hmm. uh, no, no motor company is perfect but when when you see imperfections they stand behind their product and that's what's important that's awesome well thanks for being with us Dan I appreciate it no problem anytime
Wow. Just like that, man. the whole season's over. All done. Last day. I can't believe that it's fall. I can't believe fishing season is over. I can't either. What a great way to finish it up, man. Hey, we had today, a great day. Today, guys, we just hooked up on, I don't know, working on a dozen salmon and toad. We're up here on Moosehead. I know I've been saying that all day, but I just can't get enough of it. And I keep trying to convince myself that this is the real world, but it's far too beautiful. Last day, beautiful foliage, beautiful weather, bunch of fish, awesome crew, killer boat, thanks to Hamlin's Marine. This polar craft is awesome. Yeah, those guys are killing it up there. I know. This has been excellent. All right, bud. Well, hunting season's about to start, guys. So we've got a ton more footage coming up. The episodes coming up are going to include some serious goose hunting. Uh, deer season's on its way. We're going to be traveling down to Texas for a deer hunt. We've also got a deer hunt scheduled here in Maine. It's going to be big bucks down all fall, so stay tuned. Hold on, boys. We're Let's hammer on it, guys. What was that? <laughs> Hold on. I got my I Yeti see, hat on. I love that hat. You look like a Yeti. <laughs> it's there's no fun in games here. No, no, this is all serious business. Uh, so we're going squatching. Yeah, I guess so. I think Absolutely. I saw one today.